Are we good? Sure, the yes, mic is working. Everybody. All right. <laughs> Yay. So thumbs up. Much, everybody for All right. Okay. So I'm here at Linda Z's in Arlington Heights, Illinois. I always want to say the wrong state. I'm Illinois. We're in it's Illinois. Illinois. We, are. <laughs> we are really in Illinois. This is like we were talking about the third or fourth time I've been here at Linda Z's. It's a fabulous store. I love it. Let's recap for the well, uh, for the people who missed it. We're using the CAFE machine. Right. It is the new 770, which no one else has seen yet because we have them in stock ready to go home with you today. They have a beautiful front. And the, if you come around, you can see the, the wonderful folder in here. And these little designs that are built into this folder are actually hand-drawn by Kate Fassett himself. It's so cool. It's just, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's you super see cool. him, can't you, just yeah. with his little palette. And he's got a home in London. He is very well known all over Europe for his artistic. Anyone who purchases this machine, it's a limited edition, will definitely have a machine that's going to increase in value. So you know that your baby's going to do nothing but get bigger. <laughs> yeah, <Enjoy> it. <laughs> it's a great machine. I really do. Yeah, and I love the Bernina's. We're working on them this season. Right. So we, um, you have a YouTube show, I and do. you do it every Thursday. You said right. Thursday morning, at eight a.m. Morning, right. eight a.m. And that's now, central, not, right? It's central, right. But if you're not up at eight, we record it. So right. It's there, if you subscribe, you know you can get it at any time. Exactly. So then you can come back later, and she'll share with you all the new stuff that they've got. This shop is amazing because you guys have machines you've got we were Everything. talking about it downstairs you've got yeah. the sergers you've got right. sewing machines you've yeah. got long arms and mid arms and we have got fabric guy's, and everything and we have this guy's little baby which is the 475 oh. sold out we have one left People got come it and look at it so, got it very cool and we have cheryl's new book and i know you're going to go into very that well. later online mm -hmm. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay. All right, so let's do this. So let's talk about Smocking and Pillow. Thank you okay, very much. I appreciate welcome. it. Thanks, everyone. Have fun. Let's All right. <laughs> All right. Woo. Hey, did you guys hear it that time? All right. <laughs> good, good. Thank you for bearing with us. I appreciate it very much. So we are here, like I said, Linda Z's, and we are talking about smocking today. So uh, probably about six months ago, somebody posted on our I love cuddle fabric group and they posted a, pil a pillow that they were like, how did they do this? And how can I do that? And somebody was like, Oh, they just smocked it. And I was like, hmm, somebody's going to ask me how to do this. Sure enough, they did. So they asked me, how do we do this? How do we smock with cuddle? And I was like, all right, let's figure this out. So I decided that I would, you know, ask the pros and the pro would be the person who wrote this book all about smocking. So we have her with us today, Cheryl, come on in. This is Cheryl Whited. <laughs> Before I get any further, Make sure that you share the video, and at the end, we'll announce a winner for a beginner box kit. We forgot to say that at the beginning. Technology. Um, okay, so this is your book. So tell me about the book. It is. Uh, well, uh, for a long time, I've been teaching smocking. Got it. And uh, finally wrote the book. On... Right. Yeah, because we've known each other for years in the Many industry. Years, yes. And I remember you had a bunch of patterns that were smocking patterns. Yes. So you did that, and then you decided I should write a book about this. Yeah, I Got wanted it. to uh, put a lot of, uh, of the background of smocking mm -hmm. into this book. So there's the history and the technique. Yeah, which, <laughs> which is exactly why I ended up like buying the book and reading it first, because I wanted to find a little bit about, about the history. So the book is um, it's self-published. Yes. Linda Z's has it on their website now. So if you're interested in getting it, you can get that and some of the other tools that we're going to talk about. So you can um, check that out. So tell me just briefly the history of what do we know about it? Because what I know about it is that people used to do this for like, and people still do. Yes. Okay, I know people still do, especially in the South. There's a lot of uh, heirloom sewing that still happens. Wow. Um, so I've seen it like on little girls' dresses. Yes. Right. So, so that's the typically what people think of are the little girls' dresses, Easter, christening, those types of smocking. Right. That is what is known as English smocking. Oh. So there's actually multiple different kinds of smocking, and this what we're going to be doing is called Canadian smocking. Now it existed it. well before Canada. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what? But why they just took they, the name. <laughs> well, so what happened was is uh, well smocking is very old. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's from the 13th, 14th century. And what they would do is they would pleat garments so that they were not in the way of your work. Right. So if you had a big blousey garment, it would get in the way of all your work. Right. And as technology advanced, all of those clothing could get caught in machinery and mm -hmm. things like that. So yeah, they wanted totally to take sense. it in. 
And that's where the word smock came from. And what we do to the fabric is smocking. Got it. But those decorative stitches, mm -hmm. okay, those are mainly called English or old world smocking. Got it. And what we're doing is actually doing all of the work from the back. Right, because that's the difference that I've noticed is that this is all the thread is behind it. Yes. And when I've seen like the little girls' dresses, which I never did. I'm sorry. It was one of those things that's really pretty and I never got to it. But like yeah. and now my little girls all grown up and wear a smock dress if I right. paid her to. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's usually like embroidery floss or something on it the is. top, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So different things. So smocking itself is like there's different variations. This is the thing that I think is super interesting about any sort of hobby that you get into. Mm -hmm. And sewing is definitely one of those that it can go deep. So smocking is the top thing. And then there's Canadian smocking, English smocking. Yes. So let's talk about this Canadian smocking. Yes. So it is How do we do it? worked from the back. And okay. so well, the great part is, is you can draw on the back of your fabric. Doesn't matter what kind, but we're going to do it with cuddle. Right. And you never see those marks. They are on the back forever until someone comes along like me and picks apart an old one right. to see the marks on the back. Got it. So <laughs> I want to show a couple of little things. So this is, this is your little pillow that you did. Yes. This is what I remember. It's this yes. little pillow. So yeah. this is pretty, um, typical smocking that I've seen like this there's lots of lots of like 1960s patterns that are yes. sort of like this this was right? super popular in the 50s and 60s they were on everybody's sofa back in the day mm -hmm. um and they used to be made of corduroy and satin and velvet and all sorts of fun stuff but um it really then you can see it in all sorts of home decor pillows mm -hmm. curtains yeah all kinds of things and it really kind of stopped there. It never really made the big jump over to garment sewing. Right, so. right. <laughs> yeah, so interesting. So I think I, I should probably make a dress with this, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. A cuffs. bodice, actually, like a uh, cuffs. Yeah, oh, yeah, cuffs yeah. would be great. <laughs> you could do all sorts of things. So this, you might be familiar with this kind of look, like this basket weave we talked about in the book. It's like the first one that we talk about, or that you talked about in there, because it is so familiar. We're really pretty used to it. So this might be the look that you're used to, but we wanted to do it with cuddle. So let me, let's talk through some of these. I'm going to move these over here. Yep. Okay. So here is, I'm going to show this one later. So this is the basket weave. Right. In the cuddle. Yeah. So I will say, so it's interesting. And she and I have talked a little bit about it. We'll talk more about it today. This started as a square. It is no longer anything like a square. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I don't even know how many sides that has now. A lot. But one of the things that I didn't like about this was it gets these little folds in here. But you told me right. I can zhuzh it. You can zhuzh it, yeah. Okay, so show me how you zhuzh it. <laughs> so if you get these little small uh, dimples in them and you're like, that's not how this is supposed to look, you can just come in with your finger and flatten it out. And you can also take your finger and push in to here. So you're, you're kind of pulling these from the back. And that will give that just a little bit more dimension so it looks a little more like a we Got like woven. It. Don't worry if it doesn't look the way it's supposed to. Your fingers can come in and sort of help figure it Got out. Got it. So you can see she turned it over real quick. That's what the back looks like. So these are all my little threads left over. That seems like chaos. It does <laughs> seem like chaos, but it actually... <laughs> But it, it looks really cool. very orderly. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. But we want to show you some more samples of what it looks like. So this is another one that I did. This one. So this one was basket weave. Right. Which is these are all in the book. The ones that I did. Mm -hmm. um, this one was called hard candy. Hard candy. <laughs> so again, this started as a square. Okay. And yes. ended up in this shape. I think it's really cool. Yeah, so to me, they looked like those little uh, candies that were like stick candies, uh, you know, the, the ones you would get and keep and get in your purse, you know. Right. Um, and so, again, if they if they start to look like they're separated out, just take your finger and just go ahead and tuck that in there. It'll. And I'm going to show you. Let me see <laughs> if I can find it. So I can show you. Here is the pattern. Yes. Okay. We'll yeah. talk a little bit about how we, how we put it together. But this is what it looks like in cotton. Yes. So the and this is what it looks like in cuddle. <laughs> right. I, it, a lot of it comes down to the drape and the hand mm -hmm. of the fabric. So that is a major uh, factor in how this is going to turn out. The other thing is, is these are very small. These are done in a quarter or a half inch size. Oh, uh -huh. This is done in, in, in one inch. One inch. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I did all of mine. So I did well, all of them except the last one in one inch. 
and typically it's done in half inch. Correct. Right? Okay. Yeah. So this is another one. So let's show the back of that one. So you yeah. can start to see the... That seems less chaotic. <laughs> but it's interesting how it pulls differently, and I'm sure this has to do with the fact that it's a knit. Um, no, actually, even the 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 uh, the wovens will turn out this way. Really? Yeah, they all have these very different uh, ways of coming together on the back. Sometimes the back so is just interesting. As interesting as the front. Yeah, but they. Um, this secondary pattern is usually sometimes how they wanted it to start out, and then. They went, oh, hey, the back is just as good. <laughs> so now the back is the front and the front is Got the it. back. <laughs> Got it. That totally makes sense. So this one is the first one that I did, and it's kind of my favorite. So this one you said is is called Arrowhead. Is Arrowhead, that what you said? Arrowhead, yes. Arrowhead, which I really loved. So this one actually started out, I think, as an 18-inch square. It did, yes. So it shrinks. It does shrink. And it shrinks. Yes. Is there a way, because this, this piece... And this piece started out the same size too. Right. So these started out the same size, not the same size as this. <laughs> like, okay. These were the same size together. I think eight inch squares. Is there a way to calculate how small it will get? I start usually at assuming that it's going to do by half. And okay. then what I do is I smock a tiny uh, sample just oh. to see how, in which direction it's going to shrink the most. Got it. And then I'll add that got it to to my project totally makes sense because mm -hmm. i did think that that was very interesting that it didn't it wasn't consistent in how it shrinks down right which makes sense and hawk and i were talking about it that it's like a, a physics thing of what is getting pulled to what and yes, which direction it is which is yeah it's fascinating. very cool and i mean and that look at the back i love that <laughs> super cool too okay. super cool i know it's like and it's like 3d it's, it's so thick mm-hmm so most yeah. of the folks here in the studio audience are going to take their class about this mm -hmm. this afternoon. So everybody's going to get a chance to make one of these for themselves. And I'm, they, they, everybody behind me yeah. can't probably can't hear them, but they're gooing. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. It is really beautiful. I love this one. Now, if that looks familiar, it's because uh, those very famous uh, TV shows with the dragons, um, mm. they've been using that on their costumes. So oh. that arrowhead sort of scaly look, uh, those are used often as dragon scales on that major TV show that we all Got watch. Got it. <laughs> that we can't talk about because it has a name. Okay. Trying to find it in here. It is. It's a pink one. There, there we is. go. <laughs> so that's what it looks like in cotton, which I just think is helpful to know because it doesn't turn out exactly the same. So one of the things that you'll notice is that because this is plush, and I just keep seeing all the little extra <laughs> threads, because this is plush, it kind of fills in the spaces. So this one has a little bit more gap between it and this fills it up, which I think is really lovely. I think it's just phenomenal. Really, this was the first one I tried and then I was like, okay, I'm sold. I love this. Uh, <laughs> I will say the arrowheads took me a long time, especially comparatively. Um, if it's your first one, it's a challenging one to start with. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, before we talk about that, I want to talk about this one. So this is the pillow we made. This one is fancy is it what is. it's called. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I really love because it is. It's just, it's so crazy. And if you look like how, I don't know, thick it gets. It's really cool. And I just backed it with um, just another piece. We're going to talk about backing it in a way that is less stressful <laughs> than the way yeah. I did this one. <laughs> okay. So this one is with, um, this one is with our Lux Cuddle Velvet, which is kind of a hard one to find, but I wanted to try it on a little bit longer pile because I thought it would be really pretty. And turns out the, the Cuddle 3 is great for it. So I really thought the Cuddle 3 might be too flat and not no, really look no, right, no, but no. it looks awesome. No. And I'll that dimension it, mm -hmm. it adds it like it, it puffs it up even more exactly exactly <laughs> so then we tried it with a lux cuddle so we went from the three millimeter to i think that's like a eight millimeter or something and then we went to the 10 millimeter and this is what we're going to work on a little bit today i'm going to make a pillow out of it in the end but i want to show you so this so first this is what it looks like in cotton right yes and okay. that's also that's a the smaller serpentine. dimension yes and so this is a half an inch. It's a half an inch. Half an mm -hmm. inch. So this is an inch on Lux Cuddle, which is pretty mm -hmm. amazing. So I, yeah, I am sold. Sold! Yeah, <laughs> it's great. I think it's just absolutely beautiful. It's just such an interesting texture to add to it. 
that I think is, yeah, fascinating. I love that it's texture on texture. Yeah. You know, yeah. You already have texture with cuddle and then you're right. adding like even more dimension. Exactly. So we'll do a little bit of sample sewing, but this is what it looks like. This fabric is what it looks like before. So this is just our hide. So Lux Cuddle Hide, which is available in a bunch of colors. They have it on the website at lindazese.com. This is champagne, which I think is a very beautiful, just sort of a like a gray brown. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to describe it. I'm not really good with colors, but it isn't, it isn't like a tan. It's a little bit lighter than that. It's very pretty color. I really like it. So this is the hide. And then when you do it up, this is what it turns out like, which is just nutty to me. <laughs> I know it's great, right? Imagine. So good. Okay. So now we showed you what you can do with it. How the heck do we do this? Let's do some. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it isn't nearly as hard as you might think it's going to be. No, it's actually way simpler. Um, and a lot of it, the the longest part is marking the fabric. So that's why we have right. fun and easy tools to yes. use. Yes. <laughs> so part part of what we want to do today, sorry, Hawk. Part of what we want to do today is talk about the tools that you can do it. Because I feel like a lot of times these, pro these sorts of projects, like we see them and I see this and I'm like, oh, wow, that must have been really hard. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it looks hard. It looks really hard. That's hard. It's not hard. <laughs> okay. So I want to reassure you that it really isn't hard at all. Like it just, it took some time to do it and that's really about it. So I marked up my big piece here last night was a, also a square. Um, I will soon learn to just cut them much, much larger. I do. Yeah. <laughs> Goes down because I was like, oh, that's smaller than I thought it would be. So this was a 20, 22 inch um, by 21 inch, I think, because right. I didn't count right, uh, square that comes down to this. Right. And so this is actually smocked in and it's shrinking more in one direction right. than it does the other. Right. <laughs> and so that way, and I thought it might have to do with the selvage, but it did not... No, nope, because the selvage is this way. So this is my lengthwise nap. This is my widthwise. So the stretch is here. I could still move just a little bit, but the way that we knot this off, it doesn't, it actually kind of takes out any stretch that you might have whatsoever. Okay. So this one, it took me probably about 20 minutes to mark it up last night. I didn't have her fancy tool. So we're going to talk about the tool because what I used was my big ellipse ruler, which I love because it's so long. So yes. it's, they're a 36 inch ruler, which is awesome for cuddle because it will go across the whole half width of it, right? Great, except that marking this at five inches, four inches at a time, one inch, one inch, one inch, was time consuming and not super accurate because it's a knit fabric and it wanted to move. So every time I shifted it, I had to try to like get it straight again. Okay, so you have a tool. Yes. We have a friction pen and a tool. Yes. Tell me what to do. So for <laughs> for this, um, it has the marks in the, uh, they're just channels. This is a very different type of ruler than any uh, kind that you would use for a rotary cutter because you can actually get your pen in between these, uh, these grooves. For this project, we want to do every other line. And that will give us a one inch grid. So all you have to do is draw from top to bottom. Let's see if I can get that. There we yeah, go. There you go. And you're skipping every other line. My favorite thing is sure then you'll get to the sewing part faster. Yes. That's the part we really want to do. We don't want to spend, you know, See hours them. on hours yeah and then you just turn it so i'm gonna see i want to i want to see if i can get my oh yeah this guy in here so then i turn it and i'm gonna try to line it up with mm -hmm. the lines that i did before so yeah, see if that one so this is the fine liner which is a felt tip marker Can from, from marker? friction oh sorry <laughs> ignore that line yeah. not it what if what if you did it could you do it one way one half inch and one way one inch you could but your uh smocks will be but you also that that's not a bad thing you i mean they're just going to look different than they will in the book <laughs> that's right exactly okay so i'm going to draw this line down a little further because it, it petered out there we go yeah in this, it doesn't matter. How much matter does the grain matter? That was the question. Yeah, so right. the, the, the grain does not matter. Um, the bias doesn't matter. None of those factors into doing the smocking. So it can be done on wovens, knits, doesn't matter. The type cool. of fabric. Doesn't have to be gingham. 
does not have to be doing them either. <laughs> That's great. So this was, that was actually really super fast. And yeah. yeah, super fast. Much better than trying to move the ruler. And, and much more accurate. So I will say that my, if my square inches here are actually like square inches, <laughs> not like squarish somethings. Um, so we, we had mentioned before that traditionally when you do it, a lot of times you mark the corners is what people will mark. And you just mark all the grids. I just mark the whole grid. So back in the day, this was done with a series of dots on the back of your fabric. So there were, in much later years, there were iron-on dots that you could get. Yes. Um, yeah. But the problem is, is that if you have a fabric that's dark or mm -hmm. in a cotton, if you have a cotton slub, sometimes it's hard to tell, is that a dot? Right. Or a mark, or is that just a piece right, of just, dirt? Yeah, <laughs> right. What is it? So this is super easy. Yes. And what I what I found was really easy about this. So once you get that, when you get these markings down, you decide on what your pattern is going to be, and then you mark that. Yes. And it makes it all really easy to see what you're doing and where you're supposed to be going using the friction pens. So both of those are friction pens. Um, they are erasable with heat. Yeah. So you could totally just stick an iron over the back of it real quick and get rid of it. But honestly, like all of these have the marks. These I did with Sharpie and you're never going to see it on the front. All ever. of my so, samples were done with ballpoint pen. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, using, using a, an erasable marker just makes it so that you can feel comfortable. Um, that's totally great. And this actually works super well. So I would just, if I were doing a bigger piece, I would just mark up. I would probably mark the long side and then kind of go out from yeah. there. So okay. for your, your template, you just move it over and line, line it up, up with one the next of those one. Lines, and then just keep going. And it right. just again, you'll just keep moving that around. That's your piece super of cool. Fabric until you are all gridded up. Great. So so when I did it, I did a big piece here, and we're going to do a little bit of sewing on different ones. So this one I just did with the regular, the ruler. Okay. And that one I did pretty good because C3 doesn't move too much, <laughs> which was awesome. But this one took me much, much longer to do that. Yeah. So if I were going to use the template, I will tell you what I would do is I would draw my long line and the other long line, get that square, and then work the, your work your way out with the template from either direction. Then you'll be able to keep it pretty square mm -hmm. um, if you have those baselines to go from. That makes that makes a lot of sense to me. Yep. Um, and I like the size of this, actually. It is very... Um, convenient and it does again if you just do every line then you have the half inch if you want even bigger you could skip uh to one and uh half inches or right. two inches just depends. right so oh i was gonna say that so on this big one here i did this at one and a half inches okay. so i will say that i felt like that was almost too big mm -hmm. it worked but i wouldn't do it any bigger than that yeah yeah that yeah. was like the extent of it so an inch has been super duper easy and um yeah an inch and a half was kind of the end but you can see it doesn't have any there's no tug in it mm -hmm. right like it doesn't it doesn't move anywhere all right so once we've got our template done let's figure out which one we're going to do which one did you say was the easy we one we're going to do a serpentine serpentine so that was the one i did before and i really mm -hmm. liked it okay That's so there right we go there. all right so tell me how I know how this works, but let's tell it, tell everybody right. how it works. So we have our pattern and we have our grid and we need to mark and we'll just turn that so that, just ignore that line. Okay. Um, and we're going to transfer these lines from here to here. And what we can do, um, what I, you do not need to take a ruler and mark them corner to corner like this. Okay. That that's too fussy. You'll yeah. you'll be here forever you're really just giving yourself an indicator from corner to corner. It right. does not have to be a point. Because I want to sew no from here to here. No one will ever see it. <laughs> no, because literally, like, you will never see it again. Okay? Right, yeah. So I'm just going That's from here it. to here yep. to here to here. And okay. if you have to do a lot of these, uh, I just right. make these, yep. like, hash marks, you know, just corner to corner. They, again, they don't need to be perfect. These are per great this is perfect right yes, that's exactly perfect. yeah as long as you can see tell, that right but i know yeah. i go from this corner to this corner just maybe round it out a little as yeah. you go i mean you're just, it's <laughs> really just trying to it's an indicator for you to where to sew that's all it is right you're not so, actually sewing along that line no, no. Just indicating which dots to connect Correct. exactly yep. Yep. yep yep which works really well so i found that this this happens sometimes it happens on the back of my big one is that i get this row over here that's empty right so should i be trying to plan it so that it's no, no, no just let it be just let it be over. it'll hang out it'll still fold and manipulate over there um, if you need it to uh, have an extra row you can always throw in an extra row there but i don't 
Got it. Yep. Okay. And I will say that one of, on the first one that I did, um, that I sewed the pillow, what I tried to do was make it a half inch larger because we use a half inch seam allowance with cuddle. And then I would be able to sew that together. That does not work. Okay. Okay. Cause your <laughs> edge gets real wonky. So in case you were thinking like, I'll just add a half an inch to my border. That does not, no. <laughs> like, yeah. it doesn't work. It was a square, no longer a square. Yeah, you want to give yourself some room on the Give yourself some good edge. room. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that was the thing that I learned is, like, there's no, there's your, no half inch there. Your no. seam allowance, become, it gets really uh, wobbly really fast. Yeah, real wobbly. <laughs> so, yes, I, this is why I try all these things, because then I can tell you guys. Okay, <laughs> so now we're going to sew it. We are. Show them how to sew this thing. Yes. So we've got some needles here. Tell me why I want to use these needles. So these are our um, Get to the Point heirloom sewing needles. And uh, what I like about a, what I want is a longer needle. I want a needle that, has a fairly decent long eye um, and so a very, oh yeah. See if we can see how long they are. Yeah. There we go. Nice and long. And I will say that that was different. So I tried using a shorter needle and it was harder. It is harder. It's just, it's easier with the long needle. You kind of want um, some extra room on the, the needle to be able to turn it. Okay. Uh, and so these needles, they're, they're long, they're sturdy. And they've got a nice big eye on they there too, do. which makes it easier yes. to... You um, want to, to be able to get um, more than one finger on there and be able to uh, sort of twist and turn. Got it. It's great for all kinds of stuff. I use it for uh, sashiko. I mm -hmm. use it for embroidery. Yeah, it's a, for sewing on doll arms and yeah, yeah, teddy bear the, arms. Uh, yeah. The one needle yeah. that rules them all. <laughs> okay. Is, it, good, is good. it sharp? It is very sharp. It's, okay. it's, not, a, okay. it's not a dull needle. It is not a dull needle. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because if you were using, um, with the cuddle, you could use one that was like a rounded end and it would go through the knit fabric fine. Right. It wouldn't work so well if you were using a cotton, which normally you use cotton. Yeah. So we well, like to we, mix things up here. I use all kinds of stuff. I've done this with uh, velvets mm -hmm. and satins. Oh yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. Yep. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay. So thread. So what do you recommend for thread? I match my thread to the fabric as far as weight mm -hmm. and uh, fiber content. Okay. So if I'm sewing with cotton, I'm usually uh, using thread that has cotton. Right. Um, if I'm using poly, then I'll use a poly or a rayon mm -hmm. or whatever. Right. Um, it's usually a 40-50 weight, so your average sewing weight, stuff you already have. Mm -hmm. The best thing about this is you could sew with a completely different mm -hmm. color, and yeah. no one will ever yeah. see your stitches. Yeah, if you, if you saw this one, I used black thread. And no one will see. And nobody could, I mean, you can't see that from the front. And the cool thing with the cuddle is that you can... Um, uh, you can get kind of these big knots in here, and you never notice it. Nope. No little thread nests, all those little yeah. things. So they... with the cotton, it was a little hard. I had to take a tinier stitch. With mm -hmm. the cuddle, I took a nice big mm -hmm. stitch. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you with my, um, with the ones that I did. So I, this is the first one. So all of this, like I said, is experimenting for me. Yeah. Oh, I just absolutely. try a bunch of different things. So with this one, I tried my regular Metrocene, the Mettler Metrocene, which I love and I use all the time. And what I found was that I had a little bit more knotting issues that mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. Um and that it kind of stretched a little bit, which is one of the things that I love about this this fat or this thread because it goes with the fabric. But what I found is that it stretched a little and caused me some issues when I was doing it. Okay. So I ended up using my cotton quilting thread, which mm -hmm. is kind of funny because usually I'm like, it's polyester, use polyester thread. But for me, the cotton thread, I was able to pull it harder. Yes. And not get it to knot. Right. So yeah. it's, it's not a, t you're not really wrestling with the thread here. You're kind of just. But you are going in and out and in and out. In and out. So yeah. I, I think um, a little bit heavier thread is probably good. I found that the thinner thread kind of wore a little bit more, mm -hmm. which we, you talk about to mm -hmm. do like one one row at a time yes because it will wear on the thread yes. so i brought up some um of the cotton thread that they have here because we're going to use that today it's a uh, silk finish cotton from mettler which i have used before and i really love so it's a little bit thicker and it lets you kind of pull those nice and tight and it won't break is this a 40 weight uh no it's a 30 20 weight i think 20 it was. Yeah, it was nice and thick. <laughs> nice. But, but but I wouldn't use it with cotton. I wouldn't use this like with the gingham. No, no, Because no. it would end up showing really badly. Right. But with the cuddle, it worked really well. Yeah. So that's what we're going to use. I use an arm length. What do you use? I only go about 18 inches oh, or so. so. See, yeah, this is why I like yeah. working with other people. So. And I'm like, okay, so what do you do about it? Well, I often find if I use too long a piece, then I'm out here like stabbing my neighbor. Oh, that's true. <laughs> my, my arms are longer than yours too. 
So, and um, you know, we live in we live in small quarters, so it really yeah. could be dangerous. <laughs> Watch out, Hawk! Here I come. Yeah. I'll sit in bed and sew, and you can sit somewhere else. Okay, I have to do the lick the thread thing. Sorry, guys. I probably have to take my glasses oh, yeah. off too. I do that very differently. Oh no! What do you do? Well, okay. yeah, I'm not going to give you my licked end. That's gross. Okay, take the other end. All right. I, I, trust me. I, I call myself the needle whisperer, right? So okay. what I do is I like to get all of the edges of the thread going in one direction. And then I... Do you need your scissors? No, no. It should oh, work. Okay. Um, I try to get just the bare little hairs just sticking out right here. And I put the needle onto the thread. Oh, I feel like Cheryl's eyes are probably better than mine right uh, now. No. Yeah. Older. <laughs> mine are older than yours. That, well, I forgot about that. Right? And so what you're doing is, oh, you know what? Yep. So put the. So that go. is one of the things about using a thicker thread is that it's thicker. It will work. So it'll, <laughs> look at that. It's harder to get through the eye because it's thicker. See? But it I does work. Needle whisperer. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so Cheryl's coming home with me so she okay. can thread my needles. Oh, darn. <laughs> I don't know, will I fit in this? We do have an extra bunk. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so I used to tell you. So I use my my cotton thread that I've been hand quilting my grandma's quilt with. Okay. Okay, so that's what I used it with. And because it when it comes off, it's much more wound yes. than this is. Yep. So this one came off pretty nice, but I have been using the beeswax. Mm -hmm. And so I talked to you about it and you... I do use You use beeswax too, yes. which is this stuff here. So, yeah. and they've got this, I think they've got it up on the website. They so sh we should, but we will. If it's not on there now, you will have it by the end of the day. Yeah. So, so this is the mind your mind, mind your own beeswax. Beeswax. Yeah. So if you have not done a lot of hand sewing, beeswax is actually like there's a few other product pro yeah products that work like this. You want to coat the thread because it'll help slide through better. Yeah. Right. So what we're doing is we're actually strengthening the thread, and so that's what we're doing with the wax. So wax is archival. It's um. Uh, it, it can stay in your your project long after. Um, and what's nice is it's just coating the thread. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we coat threads and we want them to be slippery or want them to do right. that kind of thing. We actually want to protect our thread because it's making so many passes through this fabric over and over. We're trying not to get the thread to shred. You know, right. So, that, right. so that, I feel like if you're using like the 40 or 50 weight, it's probably right. even more important to use some beeswax yeah. on it to give it some extra strength yeah. for it. Okay. So I know what I did, but I want to see you do it. Okay. So, <laughs> so we'll have the pro show us. I am going to throw a knot in here. That's just your quilter's knot. And that's going to put a knot there in the end of my thread. So now we've got that. And I'm going to shorten this. I don't know with so much length. I'm going to poke my neighbor. You, you can, you can have I'm some. I'm going to poke you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to stand back a little okay. further. Yeah, right. <laughs> is a dangerous. <laughs> oh, oh, that's probably me. Don't worry about it. I'll fix it. You keep going. Okay. So we are going to the start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are going to start uh, at this. I'm going to flip this. This is how it will look to you. <laughs> okay. I uh, am the expert, so I can sew upside down. So it's all good. Um, <laughs> I'm going to move to the other side of the table so I can watch. Right. <laughs> so this is our very first. We're going to sew this row. And I like to do these one row at a time. I always like to start here at the bottom of the box. And so we're going to just go in and grab just a few uh, few of those little threads there okay if it's cotton if it's cuddle doesn't matter you're just going to take that little tiny bite out of the uh out of the fabric and then you're going to pull to the knot and then you're going to go right back in and do the exact same thing because now we've got a nice secure spot there we can make lots of tugs on this and that knot is going to pop out ask me how i know <laughs> I think like I know a lot now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it and you're going to be like, oh, shoot. And then you're yeah. going to go back in. So now we're going to follow the line. And the line is telling us that the, this corner and this corner need to be pulled together. So we're just going to go to this corner. 
We're going to grab that little corner of that box and we're going to pull, 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 pull until they touch. Yep. And then we're going to go through all of those layers again and that's going to lock it and now we can let it go and they're going to stay married forever. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. okay so, um, so I'm very happy because I just learned from the book and this is exactly how I did it. Yeah. So I, so now you're going to go to. So we need to travel to the next uh, block where there is a mark and the block underneath it doesn't have a mark. Right. So we're going to skip that and we're going to go down to the next block. And this one is a diagonal in the opposite direction. So we're going to go to the top of this box and we're going to take that little bite and we're gonna pull, but we're not going to pull to make these touch because it's not one of our diagonal lines. We only pull on diagonal lines. And so we're going to actually take a second stitch right there because now I can pull on that and it's not pulling all of these down with it. So if you, if you don't take that secondary stitch there, what you're going to do is just crinkle up all the fabric and that's not what we want. <laughs> right. It's almost like a, lo like a lock stitch. It right. So, stitch. so this, this is the example of these are your stitches. Those are the ones that I stitched across like that. Yes. That just live there. Yeah. So that's what it little looks like on running the back. stitches. They're your travel threads and chaos. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But that's what you end up with all of these little threads. And so like this was straight across, yes. but then because this kind of pulls up with the way that the design goes, mm -hmm. You end up with that. That's what these strings are. So yeah. you need to secure them. For yeah. Sure. And the travel threads, uh, they just stay on the back of the garment design, whatever. It doesn't, you don't ever need to remove them. But because we've locked this stitch, you could trim them if you want. But that's but then like I just a have lot a lot of tails. work. Why yeah. do you want a lot of tails? That sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> so in this mark, we're following this corner to this corner. And we just go pick that one up. And she's clearly picking the actual corner and not my marks. Well, you can, is... <laughs> right. I mean, you can, I mean, if you pick over here, it'll still look it'll okay. Fine, but pick the corner. But pick it's the better. corner. Corner to corner. <laughs> and then. It was, it was a suggestion, not a rule. I'm right. Not yes. <laughs> and you're just going to pull until those touch. And then we lock those together. We're going through all the corners, two corners there. And it is locked. Nice. So now we have two and we just need to keep on going as many as you have in this row. Okay. So, so, so you do one row at a time. Does it matter row. whether I go up and down the fabric or side to side on the fabric? It doesn't. Um, I find that if you are left-handed, uh, you will prefer uh, to start on this side. Right. You know, if mm -hmm. you're right-handed like I am, you start on the left and move to the right. It's like the way you, you read uh, mm -hmm. read words. That's so, usually how. It yeah. It was interesting. Cause on one of them I started, uh, and I went from top to bottom on the rows. And then I realized for me, it was easier to go side to side on the rows. Yes. Yeah. It, and it I kind of wondered matter. if it would change the layout, but it really wouldn't no. because it's how the pinches are. Correct. So it doesn't so, matter which order the pinches are put in. No. If you're, this is my orderly mind. My orderly mind says go in rows and keep on going. If well, you are a, a, a chaos mind, <laughs> If you wanted to, you could just randomly choose every single one and pick. And, and as long as they're all folded. But it would be really hard to catch them all. I think if you did would. do them in orderly fashion, would. I would, would lose one in there. Yeah. But if you if you thought and that the way <laughs> works that way, then fine. It will all work out because as long as every where the marks are are all pinched, mm -hmm. it will work out. Got so it. now we're at the end of this row. Mm hmm. And I just knot this off. And then I'm going to tell you something very controversial. Okay. And that is to take this thread and throw it in the trash. Right. <laughs> and I would say we've done a very small row here. So you haven't really done a lot. No, but, but the thing is that when you're doing yes. something like this, you've gone in and out a bunch over of times. And over and over. And that is one of the things that I noticed with the polyester thread that by the end, it really should be thrown away. You want to like, throw it away. It was well worn. I don't well -worn. know if they told you, but they're still making thread. 
and they will still sell you more. It is yeah. not. It, it's it's a it's it's a still right. We're still making it, and Disney will happily sell you some more. So. Yes. yes, absolutely. The thread's right there. Is that what you're looking for? Scissors. Scissors. There we go. Right. So we want to just trim that off, and then this piece again goes to thread. Uh, thread. Uh, thread Nirvana. Okay. <laughs> and Perfect. We just throw it. Okay. <laughs> Throw it away. We've got a little, you make your little trash thin thing and it goes bye bye. Okay. Um, and that's because, again, you've made all these passes and you will know that little shreddy part at the top of the eye. Um, it also yeah. will, uh, if you've ever broken it halfway through the second row, you're like, oh yeah, Cheryl did tell me yeah. to throw that away. Yeah. It happens. <laughs> it happens. Thread happens. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And try, trying to, I think, get over that fear of like wasting something is, is an important thing because really it's, yeah. it's this much thread. It's, it's fine. Really, it really is fine. No, I mean, if Chuck you it. really want to use it, uh, I, I applaud you. Um, but it's okay. It's, it's going to be okay. The thread police do not come. Yeah. And <laughs> well, I, yeah. <laughs> True. So, Nobody does. Is there like, a, is there a, how many intersections can you do before you start to feel like you I think need to you're change? overthinking it? <laughs> yeah, we don't want, we don't want to count it. I'm asking questions from the audience. No, no, no. <laughs> and I'm, I'm telling you, the person in the audience is overthinking. Yeah, it. you're kind so, of overdoing it. So, yeah. So, so I did the biggest that I did was 24 inches that I did down. Mm -hmm. Um, and the next time I would probably do a little bit more just so I can get it more square mm -hmm. is what I want to do. Um, and at that point, that felt very comfortable to throw it away. Way, and that was about one arm's length. So about a yard is what it was for the thread that I would get to the end of that. And then I would have another maybe eight inches that I would throw away at the end. So I think part of it is you have to have a decent enough length to get somewhere. Right. But then like if you're using a small length like you are, you might use two of those to do one you, row. Right. So, and if so, you do have to stop yeah. anywhere halfway through, um, you just not where you are and then just pick up and at the next over. box. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Some of that extra length on your side might be also because the, you're using one inch spacing instead of half inch spacing. Right, right. So mm -hmm. you're technically not doing as many repetitions. Right. right. Yeah, so because okay. I'm doing, like, if I did the 24 inch one, I'm doing 24 of those corners and not even really all of those, depending on the project that you're at or the design yeah. that you're actually doing. There is a variety on here and they get very fancy. Um, oh, yes. So, like, I mean, some of these are, are really crazy. So yeah. it's a lot of lines. In something like this, for example, because I looked at this, how would you go about deciding how to do this row? So I would do them, um, and if you were looking, you would start here in this corner and work your way down. Then I would sometimes do them in, in two rows at a time. Got it. And and so you just have to look at the, the pattern, like even this one here. To me, that's two rows. I would work this side, then that side, then jump this side, that side jump. That was how I did the arrowhead. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is how I do arrowhead yeah. as well. Yeah. There's some really, comp they get more complicated. I mean, they the do. Further I mean, look, at, look at this, how amazing this yeah, is. Yeah, that's one of my favorite ones. I mean, ones. the fact that you can make your fabric do this is crazy to me. It, these are all flat pieces of fabric. Yeah. <laughs> that how, how, yeah. how many different designs are in the book? There's 25. 25 different mm -hmm. designs in the book. Yeah. And I will say that the pattern, the, it was the, the pattern was written or the written instructions were really good. Thank you. Because I did figure it out. You do. I wanted to see how you would do it. You do it slightly different than I do, okay. but only mostly because I knotted it an extra time. Oh, okay. So I would okay. kind of like take an extra stitch. Right. And you started yours with a quilter's knot, which I avoid because I can't get those things to work for me right. Oh, yeah. We all have to practice yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, I know because I can, I'm always like, zoop, and there it went. It, yeah, it just slides right off the that, right? <laughs> Right, so I'm just gonna do that little like you know licky thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. You know? <laughs> That's what I do. So sometimes I do it right <laughs> off of the spool too, but I, it's that little that little uh, back and forth, and you just get your fingernail or whatever in there, and it works. Got it. All right. So time. <laughs> that was magic. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I. I my so two gonna... uh, most popular YouTube videos are how to thread a needle <laughs> and how, how do I how do I knot? open my fancy scissor pack? <laughs> ah, Just right here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thought I had to cut a thing, and I was like, I have to cut a thing to get into my scissors. No, no, it's like a little. Uh, 
to zip one. Yeah. I have to have zippers to open my zipper. Yeah. <laughs> scissors to open my scissors. A package. Or okay. So, so these are the cute scissors. little. Cool. <laughs> I love them. They're super fun. Okay. I want scissors. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Hawk. Okay. All right. Those, those cut really nicely. All right. So. So this is how I do it. And I do that little wrap thing. Yeah, so show yeah, me, yeah, yeah. show me, tell me how to okay. do it. I'm going to walk through this yeah. with you because okay. it, cause this is, so we didn't make a, we didn't make a, a banner for this. that says quilters not, but that's what we're doing. Right. Sorry. That okay. was really close to my face. So you have a, you, when you hold your thread and your needle up, you have the U shape. Yes. Right? And so you are going to uh, cross your needle over your correct. And then you're going to take the long end. Okay. The U of the U. How am I holding this over here? So, yeah, like that. Yep, you make a little okay. X. So one, two, three. All right, pinch okay. with, with your these thumb two fingers. and pull the needle. <gasps> oh, but I have a big knot over there. What's happening? You'll pull it out. You I'll pull, pull it out. out. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's getting there. No, oh, there it is. <laughs> I was genuinely surprised there. <laughs> that actually worked. Okay. So I think, yeah, I didn't want to pull it so hard because I was afraid it would just come off the yep. end. Okay. So let me show you. So coming in here, Hawk, and we'll show how I stitch this one and you can yeah, give me um, you got it. feedback. So one, I didn't knot it. So now that I did that nice knot, I'm going to show you how I, how I started mine. Just because I think it's interesting to see how people do things differently. Oh, come on, needle. Really? Okay. There we go. So I did this, and then I left a little bit of a tail. And mm -hmm. I pinched it, and I did that just so I wouldn't have a big clump in there. <coughs> and I came over here, pulled that down, pinch mm -hmm. it, and then I did a little stitch in here That's through it. there. Yep. Okay. And then I did it one more time. Yes, yeah, so you're just taking the extra stay stitch. And then There's I did a little. Nothing oh, wrong oh with and that. then she tucked through. Mm -hmm. Got yeah, it. so that was that was how I did it. And really, it was because I felt like it was a little bit loose. So that is one thing that when you're doing this, this is really easy to do. Yes. So yeah, make sure you, you don't want it. your travel threads to bunch up. And you want them to, um, if you anchor them well, they won't. They won't pull down on themselves. Because otherwise, at the end, you just end up with a little scrunched piece of fabric, which is not what we're going for. <laughs> right. Right. And I was really surprised at how quickly it can happen. The you so you get a design. It was really fun to kind of see it come together. It's mm -hmm. like making a bag or anything like that where, like, you put this and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, it's becoming a thing. Like, oh, that's cool. The cool thing is, is you're doing all these cool stitches on the back, but really the magic is on the front. Right. So you're doing it for a while and you don't even see what you're doing. You don't even, yeah. You don't and then even... you flip it over and you're like, oh, oh, look at that. So we'll do that in just a second. So one of the things that I liked about doing this with the cuddle too, is you can see I'm taking like kind of big chunky chunks out of the fabric there. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even matter because you won't see it well, on it the other side. Well, it hides in the nap of mm -hmm. the, the plushness of the fabric. So. Great. Mm -hmm. So I feel like cuddle is kind of a perfect fabric to start this on because really the uh, the gingham was a little harder. It was harder to hide my stitches. I'm going okay? to bring up something. Okay. So <laughs> one of the things you guys are going to get to is the fact that once you get a piece of fabric smocked, then you get to make something out of it. And that's going to be this pillow. Yes. Do you remember when we made a pillow with Milan? Yes. And Milan is great. It's a fabric that we make. It mm -hmm. is super lush and yummy. And uh -huh. it has some texture like this that is added with uh, elastic. elastic. Uh -huh. And as soon as you put the pillow form in it, right. it went away. It went away. It that went was a very, it was a very like, fun show. Oh. <laughs> All of a sudden it was smooth. And I was like, wait, that was not right. <laughs> That's this, not what I wanted. This is how you get the result that we were looking for yes. then. Yeah. Yes. I love it. Exactly. And this and one has like and all sorts of texture. <laughs> so like all sorts of texture with it, which I think is great. So yeah. So does that answer? Does it, are there any other questions on actually the smocking part of it? Are we good? Of people that are really excited to try this. I <laughs> am really excited for them because it was great. It was super fun. So we're going to do this one today and we're going to make a little bitty pillow out of it. Yes. Okay. Which mm -hmm. is totally fine. You can make fine. any size you want to. This one, like I said, I started at about 20, 22 inches and it shrunk down to 
If I move it over 12-ish inches sideways, oh, yep. okay? So if I wanted to make a bigger square, I need to start wider. So really what I would recommend is that you start with at least 30 inches. So just keep doing it. I would build from, like having done this a couple times now, I would build, I would cut my fabric at, you know, the yard and I would mark it at whatever you want, 30 inches tall. And then I would smock that and then just keep smocking until it gets to the width that you want. It does. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, because you, there's right. no real formula for figuring out how no. big to make it to make the pillow that you want. Because it's, you could see that it smocks differently yeah. depending some on smock by a third, some smock by half. Right. It just some it smock just... by I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> the rhombus. <laughs> Very funky shape. And like, like I said, like this one got really skinny. It did. We're going to use one of these, right? This is your usable space. Exactly. And yeah, you'll have extra, or this one, here's your usable space. Mm -hmm. so right. So keep going. Until... So make it bigger, right, until <laughs> yeah. you get to the point that it's the size you want right. it to be. So that's what, that's what my recommendation for that is. We're going to show you how you can put the pillow together really easily. So this was one of my bigger conundrums with this. And like I said, I tried to add a seam allowance to mm -hmm. one of them. <laughs> Did not work. Okay. <laughs> tried a few different things. Finally, I was like, what do I do? She was like, just sew a back on envelope style. And I was like, oh, right. So we're going to do it envelope style today where we're going to have two pieces of backing that we're going to slip, slip the pillow form into. You could absolutely do this with a zipper, but I would put it at the bottom, like make the back, put a zipper down at the bottom. So this one I actually um, hand sewed shut. This was not the way to do it. It looks beautiful, but you can never get any of the stuffing out and never clean the pillows. So <laughs> yeah, not the best way of doing it. I just hand stitched it down here. Um, but what I would do is I oh, wanted to put a turning hole. I did. And then you hand stitched but it let me say that cut edge, that cut edge with the smocking is like this. <laughs> it's pretty nutty. So it was crazy. So what I would do if I were going to do a zipper is I would put an invisible zipper or a regular zipper right down here. Mm -hmm. So just in maybe an inch and a half or so up from the bottom, put your zipper in there and then you get to sew the back on completely to the front with the zipper already attached. So create the back yes. first. So we're doing an envelope style, but you could totally put a zipper in there instead of envelope. Okay. If that didn't make sense, It'll, leave a comment. Will. It will. Okay. Because it your will. back is your, is, is what you're using to sew the front. <laughs> right. Because when you cut this, so you do all those little knots in there. So the, the design isn't going to come out, but your edge is, you know, that which is just it's... nutty <laughs> nutty so and as soon as you cut that you also have another edge that's a little bit right. weird so what I did is I did like envelope style so I sewed two pieces that have an an overlap here okay so this will create a little I think we figured out a 10 inch pillow is what you've got about a 10 inch pillow. okay yeah. so I tucked this under I used wonder tape and just stuck it down and zigzagged it in place. If you wanted to, you could use your selvage on here and it would totally be fine. Okay, so I just tucked it under. Wonder yeah. Tape is this great stuff, which if you've taken any classes with me, you know I love this stuff. They have that here too. Okay, so it's double-sided sticky tape and I just stuck it on along the edge, flipped it under, zigzagged it. All right, these overlap a couple of inches. I think we figured out I made it two, two inches. inches. Mm -hmm. I divided the, the pillow in half. So say it was a 10 inch pillow. Yep, that's what it was. 10 inch pillow divided in half, which is five and added two inches so that each one would have an overlap. So, okay. So divide it in half, add two. <laughs> I did. Surprise. Okay. All right. So let's see if I can find, here's my selvage. I left that on specifically so I could figure out which way it goes. All right. So technically, this is top and bottom. Okay, I can see that a little bit if I, if I brush it. I think I could switch it either way and it would be fine. You just turn the pillow upside down. <laughs> right, exactly. Okay, but I'm, look at me. I'm going to get my naps going in the right direction. That, stretchy I, I and stretchy. That's right. Okay. All right. So I've got my pillow back form. So if I were going to do this with a zipper, it would have the zipper in there already. Correct. Or you could do it like this and hand sew it shut, which was a nightmare. So don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> we did so much hand sewing on the front. We don't need to we do We don't need anymore. to do any more <laughs> once you've gotten to here. So I'm just going to pin this on and we're going to sew mm -hmm. it, right? Yep. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to pin each side. And then start pinning in between there. So I'm just going to kind of get it in place. 
So for the first time ever, you're not pinning the corners first? I'm not. Why? Um, I feel like this is just going to keep it where I want it to be better because it's so fluffy. Okay. I don't know. Sometimes I do things that don't really make sense. Oh, they probably do make sense. I just want you to try to figure out how to make them. You just want me to actually into words. <laughs> into words. Because I'm like, just intrinsically, I feel like that was a better idea. And yeah, these are harder to control because of the folds. So. Well, you have pinning... a lot of things going on at once. You have the yeah. folds, you have the flush, you have the nap, you have, you know, the. The stretch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a lot of things, but pin, extra pins are always your friend. And I do love my pins and cuddle. So I wanted to make sure. So this did actually hold it better through all of those folds there. The corners are a little wibbly because of the folds that are in there. I don't get as much of the fold tacked down. Got it. So that's kind of, yeah, an interesting. I'm trying to prevent as much shift as possible. Exactly. I mean, shift happens. But shift happens. Can't, can't always. Okay, so I'm just going <laughs> to turn this. So we talk about this all the time with, um, with the cuddle. Oh, did I get that? I kind of want to, should I straighten that? It's probably close enough. Don't worry about the, 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 the pleating. Yeah. The folding. Right. Just, just don't panic about it. Just it. go with it. Yeah. It's, it's okay. just, it's going to do its own thing under there. Okay. You'll have gonna, to trust me that it will work out. I'm going to breathe deep. Right? This is where my, like some of my, uh, Fidgetiness, like I, mm -hmm. I love paper piecing and tiny piece, yes. piecing because you get to be really super pretty. Yeah, and I want to do that here because there's a design in it, but I should probably just let it go. It just there breathe. is a, a fair amount of just uh, giving, uh, giving it over to the process. Right, trust the process. Let it be. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to keep turning this because what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this thing all the way around in one fell swoop. So I want my pins to be in here. So I'm right-handed. So I'm going to pin further away so that I can pin in and be able to take these pins out as I sew. So that's what I'm trying to do here. We always talk about that, about pinning in the right direction. So you can remove the pins. That's what we mean. You mean you don't put pins in all different directions? I don't. I try not to. I mean, sometimes <laughs> there are moments. But a lot of people want to pin closer here. And then you end up with the head Mm -hmm. Getting to your needle first. Or pinning, uh, you know, against, yeah, perpendicular, per perpendicular mm -hmm. which doesn't hold down as well. So this no. is really, yeah, holding down really well. So I'm happy about that. <laughs> All right. So let's do this. All right. Okay. So I'm going to do a funky thing. And then I, <laughs> a funky thing. Let me see if I can get that to raise a little higher. Look at that cool machine. It is pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to squish this down. Work it under that fit. It's very bright. It is very bright. Do you want me to try to switch it? Mm -hmm. See if I can fix the light? No, I think we've got it sorted out now. Okay. It just took a minute to settle. Okay. <laughs> I've got to get my foot over here. So I'm going to sew this with a half inch seam allowance. I'm going to take it off the fancy cave stitches because that won't be as good for me. <laughs> It'll also take like, you know, three years to get around the box. Okay. So we're going to move this up to a 3.5 stitch length is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to stitch this all the way around and then I'm going to stitch one more time to kind of uh, get that to squish just a little okay and i'm just going to use the edge of my square here that's my back i'm going to use the edge here for my seam guide so i'm just going to keep get my walking foot to go right along there okay do one thing here i'm going to switch my presser foot pressure down because it wants to kind of drag through here a little so i just switch that see if that helps yep and you reduced your pressure foot pressure. I reduced the pressure foot pressure. That's a tongue twister. It's hard yeah. To it, foot it took me a long time. I say it enough now that I think I got it. But yeah. It's got me in trouble. <laughs> it's a good one. Okay. So I'm just getting this to come through. It's really not too hard at all. Okay. And I'm just back stitching at that corner to make sure... Yeah, there you go. That it is secure. Come on. Then there we go. There we go. All right. So the back is becoming the template for the pillow form. Right. So now once we get this done, we'll cut it, make a huge mess. It's going to be Ooh, lovely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we brought the vacuum, though. It's all good. Um, we'll cut through it. And then because we did all those little knots at the corners... None of this is going to fall apart. Nope. 
So she says. We'll see. <laughs> we'll give it a shot. So I'm, oh, I didn't put the needle down. Darn it. Okay, put the needle down when you pivot. It's a lot easier. Okay, and to remember, I've got my stretchy to stretchy, so it kind of wants to move a little. I'm just going to guide it a little extra here. And because I've got the half inch, any of this extra is going to kind of be a little weird over there, but I think it should be just fine. Okay, do another little back stitch. <laughs> Pardon me. All good. Okay. A... Needle Ooh, down. Tickle. Yeah. We haven't even started cutting yet. No, oh, just wait. <laughs> just wait. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to do a little another little back stitch here. So if you've watched the, um, if you watched me do the throw pillow before, which we've done a couple of times, I think, um, a lot of times I'll do those dog ear corners. With this one, I'm going to keep it so that it keeps the corners go out because I want to see how it looks with all of that smocking in it. If you wanted to taper the corners so that they didn't have the dog ears, you could absolutely just do that in this step. I would probably do this and then come back and taper it. I'm going to come around this corner one more time. Just secure that where they meet up. Make sure it's really good. Okay, cut my thread. Of my little pile of pins. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now I'm done, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to cut it. We're going right? to cut it, yes. Okay, so I've got my, got my rotary cutter, and I just have a little ruler. We're going to use this because it's, it's either the 6-inch or the 36-inch today. So <laughs> we're going to go with the little 6-incher, all right? Oh, what thread is in the machine? It's the Mettler Metrocene. Uh, I don't think it's 100 weight. I think it's like 40. It's the, yeah. The regular one. The polyester medicine. I think it's yeah. only one weight of it. I think I think it's forty. Number one hundred. Oh. Yeah. Okay. One hundred. Okay. Yes. Now don't be afraid to cut away all that smock extra. That is pretty funky looking over there. Like a cinnamon twist. It kind of yeah. looks like that twisty scarf pattern. Also, bye-bye sharp blade. Yeah. <laughs> Probably didn't help that I cut paper with it today. I didn't hear you say that. Okay. Look at that. That's crazy. So it is, so I would definitely recommend to use a sharp blade because you're cutting through it's I mean, sometimes it's like four or five layers. layers. Right, because it's, it's uh, been pleated underneath there. Right, so I'm not cutting off the actual backing. I'm just cutting off the edge. That's so the you're next cutting away all your excess layer. smocked areas. Right, which is why you want to make it bigger, because you could see this is where I'm cutting right at the edge of it. And I'll be curious to see how this edge is, because I feel like it got a little, maybe a little weird under there. We'll yeah. see. But I feel like where I have I have the extra here, mm -hmm. it'll probably turn out much nicer. The thing is, is that if any of your friends come up to you and they say, oh, I can see here where it didn't get caught in there, <laughs> you just say, I unfriend you. Yeah. I always say if anybody complains about what you make, you just don't ever make them anything again. So same idea. Yeah. Teresa, I'm We're not friends. This up. Apparently, like the struggle yes. with the, the, the uh, video earlier in the show yeah it's still it happening us. nope it just oh. caused us to, to the battery to struggle quite a bit so we're now five percent on my phone oh and you don't have a, a nope. thing okay nope oh. so sorry no, we're, we're doing start. a little shaking <laughs> okay so we're gonna hurry through because we got we got a, phone, a dying phone yay, okay yay, because you know why not <laughs> okay so look at how this beautiful is that surprise. is okay Yeah, you can't tell. Especially when it's, you know, the same color front and back, which wouldn't necessarily... Look at that. Okay, so do you want to try to try to see if we can get that in there? Yeah. And we're going to talk about the giveaway. So do we have a giveaway winner yet? Okay, so we'll get a giveaway winner. We're going to give away a beginner box we got, kit. We have uh, Sharon Goodrum. Sharon Goodrum. Is that what it is? 
Oh, Ooh. Sharon. Hi, Sharon. She'll see me at Quilt Festival. Um, it's good to see you again. Awesome. Yay, congratulations. Um, awesome. So we will be back next week. So all of the stuff that you wanted for today, you can find on lindazese.com. Okay. Next week, we'll be back. We are going to be at Patchworks up in Elm Grove, Wisconsin. And we'll be doing a patchwork quilt with pre-printed binding, which will be super fun. So I hope that you can join us there. Look at that. There Thank you, Cheryl. Thank, Thank you. This is awesome. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week. Is that right? Are we good? We're good. All right. Thanks. Till next week. Happy sewing. <laughs> oh, good.